Hello and welcome to another Ukraine war update. If you want to support this channel, please make sure to leave a like and comment. It helps this channel immensely. Before we start a short note, this version has been cut. On my private telegram, you can find a 20 minute version of this update with lots of footage I cannot show or talk about here. The link is in the description. While the world shifted its eyes over to recent events in Israel, Russia used the circumstances to launch a massive offensive in the Donetsk region. Company and battalion sized elements attacked on several parts of the front with a strong focus on the town of Avdivka. Russian combat helicopters Helicopters were dispatched to engage Ukrainian targets and massive mechanized assaults tried to roll over the Ukrainian defenders. A lot of footage was released but first let's take a short look of Avdivka on the map. The town is located in the east of Ukraine, just north of the city of Donetsk. Avdivka is surrounded by a set of natural barriers to the east and northeast, what makes it hard for Russian forces to advance head-on from the east. Due to this circumstance, the Russians attempted a so-called pincer movement with the aim of surrounding the Ukrainian troops inside Avdivka. Heavy clashes took place in the north in the area of Krasnohorivka and Novoslivka Druha and in the region around Piski and Vodian in the south. This strong video released by the Ukrainian 2nd Mechanized Battalion of the Presidential Brigade shows one of the many Russian attempts to assault the town. We can see a company-sized element of Russian armored vehicles advancing in a column formation before coming under heavy Ukrainian fire. Several explosions are visible as dust and smoke rises to the sky indicating a large portion of Russian vehicle losses. According to Ukrainian sources, Russia conducted over 15 of such separate attacks over the course of the last weeks. This comes a little bit as a surprise for Western observers since Russia spent practically all summer on the defensive. The recent offensive attempts indicate that the Russian army is now again actively trying to regain the initiative that has long been on the side of the armed forces of Ukraine. The Russians kept sending formation after formation into the battle leading to a high loss ratio. However, judging by the huge amount of footage that came out from the area so far, it looks like the Ukrainians were holding their ground quite effective and so far the Russian offensive failed to reach its objective. So far it has been reported that the Russians only managed to advance by a few hundred meters. Some experts still warn that if the Russian armed forces managed to advance by just a couple of miles, it could spell an imminent danger of encirclement for the Ukrainian elements inside Avdivka. So far encirclements have been Russia's primary way to fight its wars not only since Ukraine or Syria. They always try to contain, isolate and encircle their enemy by outnumbering and throwing mass at them. Most of the time this is shown through massive artillery fire followed by massive assaults that ignore own loss rates and see the greater goal. This attacks depict this once more pretty well I think. The Ukrainians not only countered the massive mechanized assault with drones, but also anti-tank guided missiles, mines, artillery and cluster munitions. Furthermore, they moved new reserves into the area what was halting the offensive as a result. The recapture of the small bits of lost positions in the north and east by the Ukrainian forces was not possible, however. Because of this fact, Avdivka still faces the danger of encirclement. While Ukraine released a lot of footage from this battle, Russia has only released a few videos so far. One of them is this tank GoPro footage that shows one of the many mechanized assaults we saw from all the Ukrainian drones. The TR-90 vehicles were also used. An interesting fact since we have not seen so much of them since the beginning of the war. Also interesting that the Ukrainian footage showed scores of destroyed and disabled military vehicles while this video depicted none of them. This Ukrainian drone video most likely filmed in the same area shows a massive Russian column coming under artillery fire. Fire. While most of the videos show to two to company sized elements here it can be that several companies or even elements of up to battalion level were thrown into the battle. The Ukrainian height advantage thanks to the natural barrier in the east I mentioned before is very well visible in this clip. The video was filmed from a Russian anti-tank guided missile position engaging a Ukrainian position. Despite all the hostilities, Russian and Ukrainian soldiers also met in the east of the town to exchange a group of prisoners for the body of a fallen soldier. Refreshing to see that they can still meet without shooting at each other, at least to some degree and under sad circumstances. White flags were risen in order to prevent any misunderstandments that could have led to bad consequences. If you watched till now I wanted to say thank you. If you want to support this channel and want to help me creating better videos with even more educational value please give this video a like and leave a comment. What do you think about the current Russian offensive? If you want to see videos I cannot show here and want to hear things I cannot say here you should consider to join my private telegram. Your contribution will be used to increase the quality of reporting and video editing. The link is in the description. The longer uncut version of this update is also already up there since I will release the updates there first in the future. With growing member numbers there, I can also support soldiers and people affected by war more efficient and discreet without making a social media spectacle out of it every time. Also hiring staff such as further analysts, veterans, video editors and map designers is a long-term goal of this channel now. 
this is not possible with YouTube alone. Knowing that I have a loyal, trusting viewer base, even if it's small compared to my overall subscriber number, gives me the peace to invest more time into creating the videos, what will make them better in the long term. South of Avdivka, the Russian assaults were as heavy as in the north. Column after column made its way towards the Ukrainian positions. Here, the Russian attack also had to go through already pre zeroed an area that was defended heavily by mines, anti tank guided weapons, cluster munitions, artillery, and drones. This video gives a good look at the scale of the area affected by Ukrainian weapon systems of all sorts and types. Looking at the formation of the Russian assault elements, it looks like that the density of mines, however, was not so high like the Ukrainians had to face during their summer counter-offensive. Nonetheless, the mines were still effective in disrupting, fixing and delaying the Russian troops. Here we see what I believe is a BTR-90 again. The BTR-90 is one of the most modern versions of the BTR armed with a 30mm cannon. The general design flaws of the BTR are still there, however. Another example of the natural barrier outside Evdivka doing its work in favor of the Ukrainian defenders. Note the bridge that has been placed by Russian combat engineers before. It did not help at least for the first vehicle. The Russians kept and kept trying to get a foothold in the area and dropped off infantry unit after infantry unit to reach that goal. Partial successful, it still came with a price. The BMP dropping off the soldiers started to make its way back right away because of the constant danger of drones, guided munitions and artillery. Trying to evade the destiny of its two fellow IFVs on the screen at first it looked like it would get away. Plus the munitions, however, proved to be very effective. In the southern sector of Avdiivka, Russian vehicle losses were as high as in the north at least by looking at the footage. Just a small fraction of what was actually lost during this offensive so far. Next to mines, cluster munitions, FPV drones and artillery, anti-tank guided missiles did their work as well. The rest was done by drone drop munitions. Here are a few more examples provided by the Ukrainian 110th Separate Mechanized Brigade. Targeted here were a disabled Russian BMP and a tank. These soldiers are part of the Ukrainian Lyot Brigade that now fights for some time now in the Donetsk region. The full name of the brigade goes by United Assault Brigade of the National Police of Ukraine Lyot of the Special Purpose Police Department. The men are seen clearing an area from Russian soldiers. This is one of the few helmet cam ground videos the Ukrainians recently released since the Russian offensive started. Usually the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade releases a lot of helmet cam footage but there was not so much usable footage by them recently. I think that this is the first Ukraine war update without a helmet cam video from the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade what is kind of special. The Ukrainians in the video engage a group of Russian soldiers in a small settlement and seem to have the upper hand since they force the Russians into a destroyed building from where they are engaged with grenades and small arms fire. From their reactions and behavior they look well drilled and seem to have the situation under control. This brigade took an active part in the battle for Klyshchevka and was part of the recapturing force. A few of you might will remember the helmet cam videos from them when they took part in the clearance operations there. I already reported about them in some other Ukraine war updates. Also please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell and enable all notifications for this channel. This really helps me out a lot. I know that most of my viewers are grown adults who primarily watch without commenting or liking in general. However, this interaction is essential on YouTube to ensure that the videos reach other subscribers and a broader audience. As I am just beginning to build a community, I feel it's important to mention this. Thank you in advance. While the so far crushed Russian offensive in Avdivka made headlines in the news, Russian troops also attempted a heavy pushway further south in the area of Novomikhailivka. From their scenes were released that so closely resembled the push onto Avdivka that many people mistook the footage to be from that area. Here we could also witness large Russian formations trying to gain ground under heavy Ukrainian fire. Mines as well as artillery, cluster munitions and FPV drones held the Russians off there as well. All documented on cameras by multiple drones. 
It has been reported that so far the Russian army launched 11 unsuccessful attacks in the areas of Marinka and Novomikhailivka in the Donetsk Oblast recently. At the outset, the operation adhered to a well-known strategy. Following artillery barrage and airstrikes across the entire front, armored units initiated an advance towards their initial objectives where they met heavy resistance from the Ukrainian defenders. However, this approach swiftly exposed its limitations when implemented in contemporary warfare. As both sides failed to effectively neutralize enemy artillery during the offensive phase, Russian armored units began experiencing equipment losses right from the moment they advanced towards the front lines. These losses persisted during their attempts to break through, primarily due to encountering minefields obstructing their path and the inability to preemptively silence the Ukrainian artillery. Whether Russian forces will successfully secure a foothold in the targeted regions remains uncertain. So far, the Russian offensive has encountered similar difficulties to their previous failed offensive towards Soldar, as well as the Ukrainian Zaporizhia offensive, which also failed to achieve its operational and strategic goals in the south. These three battles may give the impression that the current war could potentially result in at least a temporarily frozen conflict. However, given the stubbornness of both parties involved, this outcome should not be taken for granted, even if the possibility exists. The current Russian offensive actions took Ukraine and its Western allies by surprise not only because all eyes recently went over to Israel but also because it is likely to be the most significant offensive operation undertaken by Russia since January 2023. It's also believed by the British Ministry of Defense in a note published on X. This attack shows that the Russians have succeeded in replenishing some of their offensive reserves and are still far from ending this war. Ukraine, however, makes good use of their defensive assets and was able to withstand the pressure built up by the Russian offensive. Unclear how they were proceed with their own offensive in the south for now even if I assume they will keep up their efforts in one way or the other. As mentioned several times by me now, this Russian push has come with a high price. They went with what worked for them in Mariupol and Bakhmut but I cannot say that especially their approach in Bakhmut was a good one even if they were successful. Their cold mathematical approach using a large amount of human lives is nothing one should strive for in my opinion. Nearly everything in the Russian doctrine has this possibility over survivability written all over it. Here we see Russians observing a Ukrainian mine laying UGV to the lens of a drone. A pretty interesting approach. If this really works as smooth as showcased here, we could see much more of these being used soon. UGVs are around for some time now, but actual data from combat missions still is limited at least compared to other unmanned systems. What you see here is Ukraine's first use of US supplied attack MS missiles. The Army Tactical Missile System is a conventional surface to surface artillery weapon system capable of striking targets well beyond the range of existing Army cannons, rockets, and other missiles. It is fired from the High Mars and MLRSM 270 platforms. This attack was aimed at the Berdyansk airport and likely substantially damaged Russian aircraft and airfield infrastructure. According to the ISW, several open source intelligence analysts amplified satellite imagery of the Berdyansk airfield and suggested that it shows at least seven burnt out areas where satellite imagery previously showed various Russian helicopters, and additionally noted that many helicopters have since moved. This is a video that gives off close Syria vibes. It shows what looks like a BTR having a close encounter with a passing by anti tank missile flying close over it. If you followed the conflict in Syria back then, you most likely already saw a lot of these videos. That's it for this Ukraine war update. Thank you very much for your interest. Once again, please make sure to leave a like and comment under this video. Your feedback is always important for me. As mentioned before, the full uncut version of this Ukraine war update is already on my private Telegram channel. It is much longer since I had to cut out a lot of it for YouTube. For $5 a month, I can give you access not only to footage, breakdowns and commentary I cannot share here, but perhaps even to maps and further analysis in the future depending on your support. The link is in the description and is for people who want to support me and see this project growing. Thank you. Давай,